Floetrol versus Olga Sobe's secret pouring recipe. Which is better? Is it worth it? Let's see. Today I'm going to be doing a side-by-side -side comparison with the exact same colors, with the exact same brands, mixed up one with Floetrol and the other one according to Olga Sobe's recipe, group one and group two. I'll be doing a drip test to show you how it works. I'll be pouring on canvas using the same composition and I have been wanting to do this for a while. I've been wanting to see what the results would look like with the exact same paints side by side comparison. So I figured I would record the process and bring you along for the journey so you can see for yourself whether you prefer Floetrol as a pouring medium, perhaps something else, or whether you like Olga Sobe's archival pouring medium. Let's get to it. The first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do a drip test using this nice cardboard just to make sure that my paints are pretty even consistency. So to do that, I'm going to put a drop of paint of each color about the same size. And this is the flow trawl that I am doing the drip test for. How did I lose my stick? I lost my stick. Okay, now I have a stick. Here's a light pink. This color is a combination of titanium buff and I will put it in the description for you because I forget the name of the red color that I used. And here is pewter. I have never used this metallic color by Amsterdam before, so I'm excited to see how it turns out. A little bit more of this in here. Okay, and I'm just going to pick up the paper. I'm going to watch them drip, and I'm hoping they're going to drip approximately the same speed. All right, so as you can see, the pink is a hair. The pink dripped a little bit faster. These are pretty much the same, and this one's a little bit slower. So I am going to add a touch more water to this color just to make sure that they're all the same. However, I have noticed that in my experience of paint pouring, I like my metallics to be a slightly thicker than my other colors. Um, I find that they behave better that way. All right, next up, we are gonna try Olga Sobe's secret pouring recipe. And I'm gonna do the test the same way. This color, I will list the colors, all of the colors in the description for you so that I don't say them wrong right now while I'm recording. Um, but I, these two colors, the first two colors that I'm laying down are mixed with Olga's group two recipe. Those are gonna be my base colors. This color is mixed with Olga's group one recipe, as well as this iridescent color, oops, by Pebio. That's gonna be a little hard to test since I put that dot in the wrong place. And then of course, pewter, this is, mixed with her group two recipe. And then we'll lift it up and see what happens. Wow, that's pretty good. You can see they're all dripping at about the same speed. So I'd say those are good to use. Okay, I am going to start by laying down my base colors and then using my hair dryer to blow out the base as even. And I'm gonna go with a split composition similar to the open, the opening painting that I did a little while ago. If you want to, you can click on the link here to see that painting. So I'm gonna bring this side down like this and then it's gonna open up in this direction. This is gonna be this dark um, reddish magenta color and then it will be white in the middle. And I am starting with the Floetrol mix.
And then I'm gonna come in here with this color for the rest of the base. I prefer to mix my paints for Dutch pour a little bit on the thicker side compared to some other artists. If you would like to see how I mix my paints for Dutch pour with Floetrol, you can click on this link and it will take you directly to that video. My line colors, I am going to start with this pink color, which is mostly opaque um, because it was mixed with a lot of titanium white. And the other red color that I mixed in there was semi-transparent. I'll make this line a little bit thicker. And then I'm going to come in with this Pebble Iridescent. All, again, all these colors are mixed with Floetrol, which does have a bit of an odor to it. And then my very top color is Amsterdam's Uter, which this is my first time using this color, so I'm kind of excited to see how it looks. I do love to add metallics, and this one's a little bit more muted, not not as shiny or, it is shiny, but not as bright as the golden copper that I'm used to. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and blow my base paints in toward. I like to do that to make sure that I have enough base paint for the rest of the paint to move around evenly. Okay, you can see as the paints were moving there that I've got plenty of base paint. I had no trouble moving the paints in over the other colors. So now I'm gonna just go ahead and blow it out and we'll see what it looks like. All right, it's pretty. The pink is definitely opaque. You can see that it's completely covering the areas um, where the other paints are. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and draw a few finger swipes through here to complete the composition. All right, I think I like that how it is. Come in here for a close up so we can see the details. I do have some cells forming over here. Got some interesting cells in here, some interesting cells where the pink is combining with the iridescent, Pebio uh, iridescent greenish, green blue, I forget what it's called. And then I've got this signature kind of where the white comes through, this is very much a look of flow troll. We've got all these little flecks and little textures coming through. I've got some interesting lacing up here. Um, I like the way that it gradiates out into nothing down here. I think the pink is a little bit overpowering for my taste, but hey, we'll go with it. This is a good test. I am going to bring in my paints that are mixed with Olga Sobe's secret pouring recipe. If you're interested in taking that class, I do have a link in my description that will take you directly to her class and you can get 10% off with promo code Becca. I will drop a link right here for you to make it easier for you to find, 
But if you'd like to watch this video until the end to see the results, the link will also be in the description. So you don't have to scroll back through the video to try to find it. All right, I am gonna do the exact same thing that I just did over there. Hopefully I can remember the order that I laid down the paints. <laughs> and we will then do a side-by-side -side comparison. Okay, and then I'm going to come in with the other group two paint that I have mixed up here, which is the exact same brands, exact same paints as I did with Floetrol. There is no difference there. The only difference is the pouring medium. If you'd like the exact names of the paints, I will drop that in the description for you. I have a tendency to say them wrong <laughs> when I'm saying them out loud and I don't wanna mislead you. So I am going to drop the actual names of the paints in the description so you can find exactly what you're looking for. All right, I've got my base down and now I'm gonna come in with the pink. And this is mixed with Olga's group one recipe. And you can kind of see the difference here, how it's kind of spreading out and interacting. Like it already looks different to me. And then I've got Pedio. I'm going to add some of this in. And then I'm going to finish it off with the pewter. And this is mixed with Olga's group two recipe. I'm hoping the combination of the group one and the group two will create some really interesting cells. Okay, I'm going to actually come in and add just a little bit more of this into the base just to make sure I have enough of it to blow into because when I poured that down it felt like maybe it was going to be a little bit on the thin side. All right, I tried to follow the same direction, but obviously it looks a little bit different. <laughs> As you know, you can never completely duplicate um, a pore painting. Okay, so my first of all, a lot more cells. There's a lot of cell action going on here in the iridescent blue-green and in that pink color. Since those were mixed with the group one recipe, that's exactly what I was expecting. Let me add in some finger swiping here.
Okay, my friends, it has been about two days since I poured these paintings and I am back to take a look at the final results with you. This one on my left, your right, is the Flochal version. The one on my right and your left is the one that I poured using Olga Sobe's new secret pouring recipe. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the pros and cons of each version. Let's start with Flochal. Flochal, if you live in the US, is about $20 a gallon, which I hear is a bargain. If you live in Canada or some other places, it can be very, very expensive to get your hands on. Olga's secret pouring recipe, I cannot tell you what it's in. You have to take the class to find that out, but there are ingredients that are very, very accessible um, in most countries. And there are substitutes. If you can't get this brand, you can use that brand, et cetera. Um, if you are a beginner, and you live in the US, Floetrol might be a good option for you because it is a little bit less expensive. You might be more inclined to experiment and develop your own style if you don't have the monetary <laughs> waste, so to speak, going into scraping a painting and starting over again. If you live outside of the US, you can paint with just water and paint, um, or you might want to consider taking Olga's course because the ingredients that are going to be required are going to be more accessible to you and probably less expensive than getting your hands on U.S. Floetrol. That said, the U.S. Floetrol has a little bit more of an odor to it. Some people can be sensitive. And with all of the ingredients with both painting methods, I have to recommend that you read the data safety sheet and that you make sure you're following the guides so that you're safe using them. The Floetrol definitely has more of an odor to it than Olga's recipe, but both require ventilation. In my, in my opinion, one of the biggest differences is the formation of the cells. And I'm going to bring you in here for a close-up. The cells that get formed using the Floetrol method are the iridescent cells are these big bloopy ones, which are kind of interesting. Um, but the Floetrol creates this like speckled gradient type of lacing in that section there and in this section up here, which is really pretty if that's the look you're going for. It's just very different than the more defined cells that are created in the Sobe Mix recipe. You can see here all of these interesting, detailed, very uh, articulated cells. There are some very interesting shapes down here, and this section right here is my favorite. That is so pretty. And I have never ever seen results like this using Floetrol. One other thing I want to mention is that I think that the Floetrol has a tendency to dull the colors a little bit, whereas the colors in Olga's recipe end up being a little bit more vibrant and lively. And the final point that I want to make about the difference between these two is that the ingredients that Olga uses in her pouring recipe are archival. That means they will not yellow and deteriorate over time. Floetrol is not archival. If you're going to make a masterpiece that you want to hang in a gallery or you want to be in somebody's collection for years to come as a legacy piece, Floetrol is probably not going to do it for you. So I am so excited about Olga's recipe because it gives an archival, I think affordable way to create fluid art that can last for centuries to come. So thank you, Olga, for spending your time and money developing it. I'm excited about the possibilities that come with it. I do have to say, I think it's harder to learn than the Floetrol, but the lasting effects are well worth it in my opinion. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you got value out of it. Please do not forget to like, share, subscribe, all the things, and I will see you for the next one. Yeah, yeah.